Hi. Uh, I've just had a, um, a uh, comment from Paul who would like to see more acrylics of the watercolours. So, this is one I did earlier, Crummock Water. I'll do it in a crayon. I've over it. It looks okay on the screen, but it's, it doesn't really look so good in real life. So I'll now proceed to ruin it, but I can always do, do these again. Now I've got my acrylic already set up and I haven't touched this for six weeks and it's still, they're still, the paints are still usable. So I'll uh, crush a sky and it's a, so it's going to be a version of this. I am using a photograph to copy, for, for, to work from, but I don't do exact copies or anything like that. But I want to create some sort of uh, atmosphere on this one, slightly different. So let's, let's, uh, I don't usually go over paint, so I go over them, but I don't paint what's underneath. But I'm, um, so I'll just, just start putting up, start just block some stuff in, to just get some colour in and, oops. Just build some texture up on the on the paper. That's my uh, my copyright notice. Uh, right, so a bit of crimson, a bit of bit of uh, bit of red, a bit of blue, a bit of white. Now let's get some some cloudy stuff going over there. Oh, that was a bit higher than the mountain, so I just want to, I want to bring this, this over a bit more. So I'll just, a uh, bit, bit of blue. Over there, like that. Just blocking it in, I'm not, uh, Aiming for anything uh, finished at this stage. Now I'm just going to have some approximate colours in there. This is got that green, greeny bank, darker green there. So I'll put a bit of a bit of ochre in with that. Dark, brooding. Yeah, it's to get sort of shape right. Keep it soft. The thing is, you don't want hard edges on your work. You want uh, lovely, lovely soft. Put the uh, the top of that into the clouds, and the clouds into the landscape. Into it. Well, that's where we're going to go to the depth of this in there. That's another shape coming down there. So this is where I want my dark, my dark greens coming up here. Bit of neat. Just roughing it in, and because it dries, lovely and quick. Oh, that's a bit, bit too, too fierce. Eh? Okay, something like that. That comes up higher than there. Colours aren't right yet, but I just want to uh, get some shape started there. I'll try to do this as quickly as I can, really. And dark there, so. More blue. Okay, okay. Smooth it off. And we've got some, like a bank of uh, 
ferns in autumn, late autumn. So just to remind me what that is. Then. And then we've got the nice, nice green behind coming down, down here. A bit. I need some more blue, excuse me. It's going to be a lot of lemon yellow in this one, I think. And uh, my ultramarine. Tubes, basic palette, similar to the watercolour palette. Ultramarine. Now I've got some burnt sienna on there, but I've also got the light red. They're very similar colours. Um, but I use black instead of Payne's grey if I use it at all. Uh, but I've uh, got yellow ochre of course, can't do without yellow ochre, and I can't find it. Uh, I missed some nice moss in there. I thought I had a big tube of it. Uh, but I haven't. So um, I usually buy student quality stuff. Not bothered about uh, whether it's light fast, most of them are light fast anyway, as far as I know. But acrylic is acrylic. And it's all P it's a PVA glue. So you can mix it with a medium uh, acrylic household varnish I use a lot of at the moment. All right, let's just go back onto the sky. That might just be a little bit too too high there, so I might just take that down a bit. All right, let's get some cloudy things in. Oh a bit. Get under the top there. Oh, never mind. A bit of blue in there. That's a nicer colour. That's a, just a bit of alizarin and ultramarine white. Palette grey. I just play around with skies until I've got something that's pleasing. But I want some, I want some drama in my sky. I don't, I don't really want it all nice and flat and bluey. But I've got to have a bit of blue in. That's a bit of colour. Like that. I also use a bit of texture paste from time to time. It just gives a, a, a surface. It's, although we've got a surface on here with the uh, with the watercolour, the tooth on the paper, but with the acrylic, it will push fill up and tend to go maybe a bit a bit even. I want to, I want to bring the, the height of that, that cliff down, hill down. Um, if I just put enough, but, but something to obliterate it. Make your clouds of silver, not of uh, not of lead. Now, in the murk there, there's a more distant. Light red is, is an incredibly strong colour, so you have to be very careful with how you how you use it. Listen. Oh, what if I sat too much? That seems to be okay for the moment. A little peak there. into this uh, water here.
The paper's totally changed its character now, it's stiff. Whereas we've all had the soft bit for. So I've got, I've got to justify that, there's going to be some light above it. And this would be the, the dark colour. And this would be over that. The white. Much lighter colour here now. Then lighter still. A bit of ochre with that. Use a small oops, use a smaller brush. Make sure you keep your brushes nice and uh, clean clean. Still gotta do some more there, so let's get some. You really lose yourself into painting, uh, painting skies. Blendy. As you, as you know, this dries very, very quickly. Don't, I'm not using pure white, I'm mixing it with, uh, with uh, some of the greys on the palette at the moment. I'm just building up the clouds coming over the mountains in the Lake District. A bit of light blue sky. And then I can put some clouds back in, some darker clouds. <coughs> now what's a bit of uh, colour now, a good clear colour is a touch of alizarin and ultramarine. And you can go red or you can go to the blue side. Oh, there we are, just have to get some colour coming up over there. More blue I think. Some overhead cloud, a little white. Use more white than anything else, of course. So we'll just put some darker cloud in there. And then we'll get some brilliant sunlight. So we'll never get it over there. Bit of ochre in there. I went to get a, a jacket all today. I've got big bony shoulders and where people sort of got big shoulders, uh, muscles, uh, trapezius muscles on the top. I have mine that seem to be the back. I've always had square shoulders and I've had all sorts of problems when I've had made to measure suits because of it. And I've done better by going to buy off the peg suits and to try to find somebody that would take the ridge out of the back of the the shoulders on this, on this jacket it proved quite difficult but my wife found somebody online, a local lady and 
I, I met her there and we talked. She was a, she was a very, very fine tailor, tailoress. Got a wonderful pedigree of the places she's uh, worked and trained. And got a degree in, obviously, in costume and couturier. Couture. And she could do it very cheaply. I'm just, just misting that out a little bit there. I'm going to do it with a bit of a. Oh, okay. So it's just show a bit of mist. Try to keep this, keep it soft. The watercolour paper is, is expanding. It's quite, quite bouncy now. Right now, let's get some, some green. So I've used a bit of, a bit, bit of black. And that's quite, quite a light, quite a light green there. A bit of white in there. These greens, I can't get the sort of electric greens that they're in the photographs, so I can only get what I can get. Now, uh, we've got some, it's a bit of a sienna with that, I think. Because we're coming down here. And they've got a, like a separation between this lot and that lot, so I'll put a darker shadow, Belizean and Ultra, a bit of white in there. These take much longer to do than watercolours. This this is very dark shadow because of the time of day. So we've got that dark in there, and then we can put in the sort of acid greens on here.
I can only approximate things, I can't copy slavishly. Now I've got some nice green on the top here, just catching right there. And we've got some darker, but going off into the uh, distance here. So good. I'm struggling with the dark at the moment. Because uh, this is quite a deep like, like, valley in there. It's surprising how quickly you can work with the acrylic. Try and keep everything soft is the key. Now, the first acrylic I've done for about six, seven weeks, I think. All right, let's just clean my brush. Okay, so try to pick out the shape of this with a um, bit of, bit of uh, white and, and, and yellow. Just catching the light here. Paint the light, paint what you see rather than what you think you see. Uh, it's quite dark, quite light coming on here. Yeah. And we've got the nice light gets in here. That's a gentle bit of grass showing through. These are grassy slopes. That's a bit better. Nice bit of light on the top there. Catching a bit of the sun. Still, it's got to go a bit darker. I can put a bit, a bit of a crimson in there. So it's darkish, but not obliterating dark. So we're catching the, the clouds. Right, well, okay. Let's go back uh, to the hills here and reinstate that. So, with that, that colour, that nice, nice grey. Just showing, so I'll put the blue, the blue background in. Too dark. Uh, it's like a, it's a good capture the 
the blueness of this distant distance. Change that. What I'm copying is, I'm not going to show you what I'm copying, but that blue, blue, blue. You don't need to see that. Alright, okay, that's slightly darker blue. Go back to the sky now, and put some even more light in. I'm going to use a touch of ochre. Uh, these are the lovely little clouds just going over the top. I made that a little bit distant there, separated from this one. I'm going to put some, some, some darker shadows in there to show the shape of the ground. And now let's just put that in there. And lost some bound. Just a touch. It's going down here, there. A bit lighter. That, that was reflected in here, but in no detail. It's just a darkening of the, uh, the tone there. So it's just uh, blue, red. Oh, that red is so strong. Oh, it's just dark on that there. Just on that edge there. Oh, you shadow there. It's looking a bit like a Bridget Riley, those streaks are vibrating a little bit now. Let's get back into some of some of this here. This uh, this lovely green. The beach is the other side of this. If there is a beach, and there. More green. Like it sort of sweeps, sweeps down here, and we've got some, some lovely trees. So let's um, mix up a nice green, burnt sienna, black, and yellow. So a good, good dark. Oh, they are little trees. All black, I think. Sort of in silhouette. And it shows the edge of um, of that, that the, the land before it reaches the water.
pushes. And they're on the top of these stunted trees. Let's change until them all looking the same height, like a soldier, the like soldiers. And we're just going with some nice light. Green. Mix mix and match colours. Let's get some yum here. Don't uh, make everything a flat colour. Make sure you get as many colours as, as you can. Uh, right, nice and light in there. A bit of white in there, I think. Just soft. And as we come to the to here, there's more into the shadow cloud. Some of that in there. Show the ferns, the Yorton ferns. As the paper starts to take more paint, you can start dragging over and it will catch the high spots. Oh, I see that nice bit, bit of light. So it's all very dry now. And we've got to get this colour sort of ready coming all the way down there. I'm not going to do any great detail on it. It just takes takes time. Right, let's just yeah, nice. <coughs> let's get in with more greens now. The, the the land seems to be ploughed or follows lines down here. I can do that with some dark colour. Let's go over there. More white. Catching light. I've got to bring that back over there. Right, and then we'll put in some, there's a sort of, sort of dark wall here, so let's do that in, in dark. I can probably show stone walling by just putting in some very light.
think if you suppose you start naming things, <coughs> you start to um, draw from your memory rather than what you're actually looking at. So paint what you see, not what you think you see. Because this is all I can see is just just some shapes, some brilliant shapes, catching the light of the light sides of the of the stone wall. Right, let's uh, let that go. So now we've got our we put our dark. My black has gone very dry now. Um, just put a bit of texture in here. This is the shadow in, the, in this fern. And then we've got bits coming down here. Don't put it away, don't put all the detail in, I just a bit selective, just put some in. Don't be worried about using black. Black's a great colour. It mixes great with other colours, but it can overwhelm. And mixed with uh, yellow, it makes lovely, rich greens. No light on there. So that'll show. And we're going nice and light across here. Bit of nice oakery stuff. Some nice light tops to the uh, to the grass here. I'm mixing white in with the lemon yellow. I want the, the highlights. This needs some more ochre in it to show the lighter ferns, so just dogs over that. Block it with uh, another tree here. Mm. This is easy to brush it, just I don't want it all to be too solid. Bottom on the top. Over the right, I could always draw on some branches. So then we've got a, a nice bright tree in here but I, I'll take that one across here. So if that one is further in there. I'll get some nice Stiff one. 
one there. Try this on the water colour underneath. Didn't quite come off. That's just kind of dark green. Black. Sienna. Lemon yellow. See, I've modified. The black, so it's got a lot of colour in it. Right, let's. Uh, and these late autumn leaves. I've got to go over this uh, water. Just on the top, show a bit of light. And then. Some nice more ferny stuff in here. <coughs> now let's get some dark in this foreground here. Dark ferns and shadow. Starts make the lights look brighter. Okay, but not too bad. Still don't like my, my heels, they're still better in watercolor. Right, I'll, I'll go back and, and uh, lighten, lighten all this on. Uh, I wanted to reflect some more of the sky. I haven't quite finished with the sky. The thing is, these do take time. A bit of blue, just a touch of blue. We've got back on with my colours. That's, that's the nice I won't get going into there. Maybe I could probably stumble a little bit of a greeny colour in like that. Now the light, the light in the sky, I, I'm going to put in some clouds, but very light. I'll say very light. Uh, just have them coming up here, coming up from behind. Watching this in one go, I'd be a try, try for your patience. And we get light, some light blue sky showing through here. Just vary everything, just make it look different. Just a touch more blue in there. Just 
see that's a little touch of that and then <coughs> and we can go back with a bit of cloud on the top here just touch of the crimson touch of ooh, touch not oozles just put some of that light back in it's a gentle cloud just coming across still that my clouds are still just a just a touch too dark they're not pure white they're, there's quite a bit of color in it Case of quitting with your head, isn't it? Or not quitting in your head. Keep it all soft. Quite a bit of alizarin in, in this. So I'm trying to show this, this isn't a hill, this is a cloud coming up over that headland, or over the, these, these distant hills. But I want to put some light back in, in that distant one. And then it's just, just in the mist. mist. I'm just reducing, just taking out the, the hardness of it. Oh, yeah. And there's still quite a bit of light in, in that one. And then there's this blue, this darker blue on the Too much blue, you can't see my palette. That's blue and alizarin with white, makes a really good colour. Oh, that's not like that, I don't. Sort of an oakery. Let's put a bit of oakery in there and see what happens. Well, okay, maybe we can just put the light catching on, on on that one. And there's some sort of light. Cascading down into this. <coughs> oh, that's a little bit better. I've got some sort of form in there now. Oh, I'll go back to my my tailor. She's uh, so that's a brilliant artist. Her name is Zenab. And the is she? So anybody want a good tailor in South London? Let me know. All right. Uh, right. So I'm going to put that light back in in here. Uh, 
I could put my green back, my dark green back there. Um, right now, I don't know if it's good or what. I know, I know my distant, my hill there, not not so good, but that's what I want. I want some light on these leaves. This is all shadow, cloud shadow, <coughs> but we've got just a touch of the acid the green just showing through here. We've got the green there. Well, if this doesn't work, I'm going to say so because I haven't done it for a long time, I lost my way. I'm out of practice. <laughs> right, let's just put in some some dark, quaggy bits in there. Bit of detail. I know there are lots of other yellows and I'm only use, I only use one to keep it simple. We've got the, the more acid chrome colours. Needs to be a bit richer. So with that green, it's just just drag some of that warmer colour over there. A bit better. Warmed it up a little bit. I'm struggling now. I don't see that I can do much, much more to it than, than that. So it's this headland here that, that's got quite a bit of light in it. Picture, I can like see more colour. I see. Right, I'm gonna let that go. Can't do any more at this stage. I might carry on working with it. Sign it. It's Crummock Water in the, in the Lake District, Cumbria. I think I'll just put a couple of more. Just a little bit of detail here. Uh, 
Right, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in the mount. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, I can find the blue mount. Well, there, I, mean, I could, I suppose, one little bit, which I've missed, is where I tried to put a little rock in the end there, but that didn't go quite according to plan. Too far there. Yeah. Let's just. Maybe some of that. Oh well, let, let that go. <coughs> there we are. Crumbled water up in Cumbria in the Lake District. I'll zoom you in, you can have a little look around it. Same focus. It's always a bit creaky. See, that's the bank of ferns, the other side of that, that wall. That's my background. There, that's the other, the hills going off into the distance. Didn't make a very good job of it. But anyway, that's my version of it. I'll just move the camera around so you can see. I'll, I'll upload it as uh, an acrylic version of the watercolour, which doesn't exist anymore. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.